attention in class, you are going to fail, fail, fail. You're getting these headaches every day, Helen. What's wrong? I don't know. Maybe it's this new word processor. It seems blurry, even after adjusting the display. Yeah, display. Come on, Jason. That was an easy one. Keep your eye on the ball. Keep your eye Vision series. The scenes we saw at the beginning of the program are difficulties many people experience today. And they all have one thing in common. They're caused by vision problems. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that those people don't have good eyesight, just that they have not developed good vision. And there is a difference. Sight is simply the ability to see clearly, but vision is a much more complicated activity that is learned over time. Jennifer's attention problem may be because she hasn't learned to change her focus rapidly between the chalkboard and her notebook. Helen may be under a lot of stress at work, but her headaches may be because her eyes don't align properly while doing close work at the computer. Jason can see the ball, but has not developed the visual skills he needs for good eye-hand coordination to catch it. So, what do we mean when we say good vision? Three, seven... When we think of our eyes and how well we can see, this is what many people remember. Very good, Michelle. You're 2020. But 2020 eyesight does not mean good vision. The eye chart is only a simple measuring standard of how well the eyes can see a certain sized object at a certain distance. There is much more to vision than that. Complicated process. Problems with one or more of these abilities can result in other symptoms like learning difficulties, reading problems, lack of coordination, or frustration. But stress on the eyes can also lead to a breakdown or loss of vision abilities that had developed normally. It's something that can happen at any age. And as those skills diminish, a person may experience headaches, confusion, and loss of concentration. Very often, people experience some of these problems and never associate them with their eyes. But a visit to a doctor of optometry can quickly begin to help solve them the eyes and vision system. When we go to an optometrist, the doctor examines our eyes both outside and inside to make sure they're healthy and structurally sound. There are tests that determine our visual acuity, how well the eyes can see both far and near. If the doctor finds we are nearsighted or farsighted, for example, she may prescribe eyeglasses or contact lenses to compensate for the problem. They're also trained to conduct a thorough vision examination to evaluate our visual abilities. During this examination, the doctor may find areas of vision that have been delayed in development, or stresses on the system that are producing a problem, or even skills we once had that we've forgotten how to use properly. In those cases, the doctor will prescribe optometric vision therapy, sometimes called vision training, to help solve our problems. Among other things, an optometrist is specially educated and licensed to use lenses and prisms to make changes in how the eyes perform. The doctor may prescribe them along with a program of specialized activities that are custom designed to develop or enhance each individual's visual skills. These tasks are practiced under controlled conditions in the optometrist's office over a period of time and can eliminate many vision problems altogether. It has shown that vision therapy can be highly successful in treating adults with these problems as well. It started out just at the office working at the word processor, but now I'm having headaches at home on the weekend too. Is it really because of my eyes? It's not exactly your eyes, Helen, but it is your vision. Do I need new glasses? That's only part of it. What will really help you and your vision is a program of vision therapy. Helen's case is not at all unusual. More than 40 million Americans use some kind of computer screen every day, and a great many of them have eye strain and headaches. Once the problem is isolated, the optometrist continues with a program of vision therapy activities that reinforce or re-educate the vision abilities needed for doing work at a specific distance. 
This can eliminate the stress on the vision system and the headaches. I don't know. The optometrist evaluates each case individually, prescribes lenses and prisms, and designs a specific vision therapy program for the vision difficulty a person is having. Jennifer is in a vision therapy program with other people who need to improve their visual abilities. Although this is a group session, each one receives individual attention from the optometrists. In the third grade, we did um, seek some help. We, I went to my pediatrician. We went to a pediatric ophthalmologist at that point, who both told me the same thing, that she had a lack of convergence. Um, but that there really was nothing that could be done about that. And at that point, we went back to behavioral optometry. And I was reluctant. I was, I was very reluctant at first to pursue that. Um, because my own background, being a nurse, I, I just had not heard enough to convince me. But I, I was willing to give it a try. And she was in prism glasses. And within a month's time, um, the difference in her handwriting, the difference in placement of letters and words on paper was truly amazing. There are many signals that could indicate a child has a vision problem. Trouble reading aloud, a short attention span, difficulty doing close work, reversing words, losing their place, trouble with eye-hand coordination, or avoidance of schoolwork that leads to failing grades. Parents and teachers often mistake these signs for laziness, daydreaming, or even a learning disability, when they might be indications of visual problems that could be successfully treated with vision therapy. Well, I'm always concerned about the child who seems bright and yet is having trouble in school. One of my fondest illustrations uh, is of a child about nine years, about 11 years old, who I had never seen before, and I asked the child if he had trouble reading. And his mother was astounded. I had never seen uh, the child before, and she said, uh, how did you know it's been the bane of our existence? Uh, I turned to the little boy and said, uh, can you tell me what trouble do you have? And he said, well, when I'm studying, I can't focus on the line. I keep jumping up and down, and my teacher is always scolding me. Uh, I think this is a very dramatic uh, example of a child who did know what his problem was, and he was helped tremendously by visual training. Vision therapy is a safe and scientifically sound method of vision care. It can be very enjoyable, and certainly make your world better, happier, and more productive. In many cases, a visual training program can be completed in under a year and is covered by health insurance in many major medical plans.